For the social and communication area, there are four subcategories that clinicians look for deficits. The first is social reciprocity, which refers to how children respond or reciprocate in social interactions. So like how the behavior of one person influences the other, and vice versa. An example of impairment in this area might be referring to being alone and not taking a role in social games. A second area of potential deficit is joint attention, which is the state of wanting to share an interest with someone else. So it's like, hey, check out this awesome thing I found. So an example of impairment in this area might be a child not sharing their interests or amusement in an object with their parent. Next, there's nonverbal communication, which refers to difficulties either using nonverbal communication themselves or interpreting nonverbal cues from someone else. So maybe the child won't put their arms out when they want to be picked up, or maybe they won't be able to tell when a parent's upset, even if the parent's frowning and crossing their arms. The last subcategory of communication deficits is in social relationships. So children have trouble developing and maintaining relationships. So maybe the child has a hard time making friends, or they're able to make friends, but their behavior tends to drive the friends away. The other major area is called restrictive and repetitive behaviors. And this category is pretty broad and can include a whole bunch of behaviors, some being more well known or characterized than others, like lining up toys in a ritualistic sort of way, or flapping one's hands, or imitating words or phrases. The child might be fixed on certain routines, like taking the same route every day to school, or they might have restricted patterns of interest, like having a very specific and in-depth knowledge of the Titanic or vacuum cleaners. Children with autism spectrum disorder might exhibit one or more of these deficits and vary in how severe the deficit is. With that in mind, it's important to remember that each child with autism spectrum disorder is going to have a different spectrum of symptoms and deficits. 